Please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, May 7th. We have a public comment period. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak? If you come up to the mic and just uh, give your name and mm -hmm. your address, please. Uh, Lynn Larson at 553 Ocean Boulevard. Um, I'm here to create awareness and express my disappointment that the area north of Boar's Head, although it's included in the plan for road improvements that's being presented at the May 10th public meeting is not included in the funded portion of the plan in the two uh, options that are being presented by the Hampton Beach Area Commission at that May 10th public meeting. The roads and the sidewalks in the area north of Boar's Head are deplorable, causing a serious safety concern for both residents and visitors. The failed drainage system of these roads have caused massive destruction to property and an enormous and illegal burden of dirt and mud-laden runoff to the marsh. Complicating matters, the feud between the town of Hampton and the state over maintaining the road and the sidewalk in this area hurts taxpayers and area visitors alike. Starting with drainage, I know the area, aim of the road improvement plan is not primarily drainage, but one can't separate drainage from safety and maintenance issues in this instance. The drains are built into the road system and years and years of band-aid maintenance of the sidewalks and the roads have created a drainage crisis. I recently built a new home at 553 Ocean Boulevard. To obtain the required permissions from the board, the town and the state, I spent thousands of dollars in engineering and special permits to satisfy conservation concerns. As you know, the permit re requires special drains to control runoff from roofs and even from the small roof of a shed in my side yard. I am not allowed to use fertilizers required to plant native vegetation to further pr protect the marshland. My front walkway and turnaround area are required to be permeable pavers and I am required to maintain all drains and permeable pavement by regular vacuuming. I understand and I support the need to protect our natural resources in Hampton, but it is extremely upsetting to see that neither the state of New Hampshire or the town of Hampton is held to the same standards that I am as a private citizen. I have difficulty understanding why the drainage that is occurring on a much damage that is occurring on a much greater scale due to poor road, sidewalk, and drain conditions are considered a lesser priority for funding than some cosmetic and parking improvements at South Beach. This past winter I lost at least a foot of soil from areas of my yard due to unchecked flooding from the street. I have deep gouges running on both sides of my property from the rivers that came from the roadway and through my yard. My topsoil went directly into the marsh, along with many more tons of soil, rock, and sand washed in by flooding from the street. I was certainly not alone in this, as many of my neighbors suffered much greater damage to their homes and property and to the marshland. Sidewalks in this area are in deplorable condition, and in some areas they are literally impassable. Due to the long dispute between Hampton and the state over who should maintain the street and sidewalks in this area of Ocean Boulevard, no one assumes responsibility. It is my understanding that Hampton Town has agreed with state to take over care of the roads and sidewalks in this area once the state repairs the roads and sidewalk. However, if this area is not funded in the improvement plan, this can never happen. Tons of broken pavement and rocks thrown onto the boulevard during this winter storms were deposited on sidewalks and yards along Ocean Boulevard. During these storms, plows were running up and down Ocean Boulevard 
shoving rocks, sand, soil, huge sections of pavement, and water off the streets into our sidewalks and yards, worsening the impact on our homes and the marshland. Yep. Along with other residents, I shoveled up much of the debris in front of my home to facilitate removal. But the DOT trucks that have come to clean up the parking areas drive right on by and, and go around the piles. All these, although these rocks and broken pavement did not originate from our property, apparently they are now ours to deal with. As you know, Ocean Boulevard is a popular area for walking, jogging, bike riding, especially during summer events. However, it is literally not possible to walk on many Ocean Boulevard sidewalks due to poor sidewalk conditions, forcing pedestrians into the roadway along with excessively high-speed traffic. Riding bicycles along this area is hazardous as well. Both resi residents and visitors take their lives in their hands due to speeding drivers, lack of a bike lane, and in some places, lack of even a median strip. The two traffic lanes in each direction of Boar's Head are the site of daily drag races. Many mornings, there are newly laid black strips of rubber on the northbound roadway in front of my house. Drivers routinely speed along the boulevard, making it hazardous to cross Ocean Boulevard to reach the beach. The guardrail rail, along which visitors park in the center of Ocean Boulevard and which residents must climb over or walk beside has few openings and they do not correspond with the seawall openings, forcing people to walk in the street for long distances besides speeding traffic. If one does make it across the impossibly high curbs in a large section between Boar's Head and Winnicunit, mean residents and visitors alike are unable to step up onto the sidewalk, requiring traveling in the street beside speeding traffic until reaching an area low enough to get up onto the sidewalk. The steps built many years ago to allow access in one of these areas are so deteriorated that use of them is more hazardous than walking further in the roadway. I believe the transportation study found that traffic volume in the area north of Boar's Head does not support the two extra lanes and their removal would slow traffic to a much safer level. The intersection of Winnicunit and Ocean Boulevard is very dangerous, especially during the summer when unfamiliar drivers routinely make their turns in the wrong direction and this has resulted in a long history of accidents. Looking at the road improvement plan south of Boar's Head it seems unreasonable to me that 100% of the money under the two plan versions being recommended for consideration are being spent in South Beach only. Much of the funding is to add more parking spaces and beautify the main beach to boost tourism revenue, revenue and revenue for local businesses. However, north of Boar's Head, we are taxpayers that contribute substantially to the revenue of the town, and we have serious, long neglected issues with road, sidewalk, and drainage conditions that deserve and need correction now. At the last meeting of the Hampton Beach Area Commission that I attended, we were told not to worry that we are in the road improvement plan and they will pursue funding at a later date. Since construction of the funded portion of the plan is not scheduled to start until 2022 or 24, this pushes the needed improvements north of Boar's Hood way too far into the future. We deserve and request that this board exert its influence to address our concerns. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? Good evening. Uh, Brian Mills for Aquarian Water. Uh, just review of the agenda tonight indicates that you'll be discussing <coughs> Aquarian fire hydrants. Mm -hmm. and I assume hydrant maintenance. Uh, as many of you know, this is a, an issue we've been working very closely with the town on, uh, not only Hampton, but Northampton, uh, certainly in recent months. Um, uh, fire service is something Aquarion takes very seriously, and everything related to that, whether it be hydrants, uh, hydrant maintenance, hydrant reports, hydrant maintenance reports. Uh, as you recall, last October, there was a 
letter signed, letter of commitment signed between Hampton, Northampton, <clears throat> Aquarion, and Eversource having to do with a number of issues, one of which was uh, hydrant maintenance and the hydrant maintenance reports. Uh, based on feedback and other uh, discussions with the towns, we, our response was to update the format for these hydrant maintenance reports. And the first of that, of what we'll call the new hydrant reports, uh, were just delivered in April for the first quarter of 2018. Um, there is also a memo pending from uh, your town manager, Mr. Welch, uh, for some clarification on some uh, remaining questions and issues having to do with the 2017 hydrant maintenance reports. And as we've done in the past, we look forward to working very closely with all of you on that issue. Uh, and also worth noting, just uh, about a week and a half ago, I think it was, it was April 26th, uh, as part of our periodic meetings with your fire chiefs, uh, uh, Carl McMorrin and Steve Bernier of uh, Aquarion, uh, met with Chief Ayat, uh, Deputy Chief from Northampton, and the new Fire Chief from Rye to discuss uh, fire service, hydrants, uh, upcoming big projects, get feedback from them. So it's a, a very good uh, collaboration we have with the Chiefs, and uh, all the reports were good from, from that meeting on, on fire service and hydrants. So just want to make sure we got that on the record. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak in the public? Seeing none, we will go to announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise? Uh, nothing this evening. Regina? Um, I just want to add, obviously we all know about the meeting on May 10th, but I had the Hampton Beach Village District actually <coughs> laminated some flyers for me this weekend, and I went and I did post some Good. down in the North Beach area, so the people walking by, I know Good. I live down that area too, there's people walking all the time. So there's one down North Beach Barn Grill, and there's a couple, uh, one before Rick, and then there's also one on Wanaconnet <coughs> Road. So the details, if anyone's looking for them and are interested in attending, are all up over in that section, and uh, you can thank the uh, Village District for funding that. Good. Thank you. Jim? Yeah, just an announcement in, in, in conjunction with what was said at public meeting is you know the warm weather's here and the motorcycles are out and the motorcycles on ocean boulevard are absolutely ridiculous the cars too the speeding so you know an announcement to ask people if they would please slow down uh. keep the noise down and respect that it's that it's more of a pedestrian area than a vehicle area so please slow down and, and quiet down Here. rick um Again, about the May 10th meeting, um, I hope that it'll, uh, there's been a lot of uh, conversation about it. A lot of people have been in contact both by email and calling me, and I think Lynn Larson here has done a wonderful job uh, getting the word out there, and uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, having lived in that area for 40 plus years, I know that area very well. Um, the motorcycles and cars do tend to use that as a, as a highway, and I, and I think I don't disagree with you. As uh, far as water coming over the wall, it's been doing that and, and flooding out those yards in that area forever. Not saying that the drainage doesn't need to be repaired, but that, that's going to happen time and time and time again. I've shoveled more rock and, and more stuff out of, the, out of our yard down there. Uh, so I know it happens, and I understand your plight, and, I, and we, we got to work at getting some corrections done that that sidewalk being elevated across the street they've got to do something about either making it handicap accessible in more areas or or something because you're right that that steep three foot embankment to try to walk up is ridiculous uh, so I, I would encourage everybody to go to the meeting on on the 10th voice your concerns let them know what it is uh, you know, we had a great week this past week. We had our first real warm weather. Uh, I heard some complaints about a lot of the trash on the beach. Uh, just re be reminded that, you know, we don't have our summer help working yet. The state doesn't have their summer help working yet. They, they got it all cleaned up, and they did, but it's going to take a while. Just uh, the people that go down here and leave their trash on the beach, it's their fault. It's their problem. we got to try to try to do it but we we only have 
limited amount of help this time of year. Hopefully, now that it gets warmer, we'll get some more of our summer help. The state will get more of their people, and, and we'll get it cleaned up faster. But um, it is what it is with the people that, that visit the beach on those days, and we just do our best to try to get it cleaned up. I just want to say, yep. it's not just the uh, ocean water, it's the rain water that be is oh, becoming absolutely. a major problem. It's the 10 uh, drains that don't work that are supposed to take mm -hmm. the rain water off that have really become oh, the problem. Absolutely. Everyone understands the uh, salt water, but it's the rain water. And this week, with those rainstorms that we had, maybe it was even last week, one of them was the worst one I've seen since winter. It, uh, there were torrents going everywhere. And a lot of it, unfortunately, I think, comes from Boar's Head. And it's too bad, uh, you know, and eventually when these pipes are addressed, the town is going to be able to tie in and do something with the water that's just pouring off of Boar's Head. And it, part of it goes down by Lynn's way, and part of it comes my way. And part of it comes from the end of Winnicunnet Road, those condominiums, not the Winnicunnet Road, uh, where Boar's Head, right where they're stopping, those condos there, all their wood chips end up in my, in the lady that lives beside me's backyard. You know, it's amazing. So there's, it's just the regular drainage that's the problem, and it, a lot of it's uh, rainwater. Absolutely. I can understand the salt water, but the rainwater is intolerable. Okay, so we have the approval of the minutes of April 23rd, the public session. We'll make I'll, a mo motion. Second. Seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. We have the April 23rd non public session. I'll make the motion. Motion. I'll second. second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Consent agenda. We have the 2018 veteran, new veteran credit. We have an entertainment license and posted permit for the Boardwalk Cafe. We have a one-day entertainment license for the run for the ocean. We have a parade permit for a run to the ocean. We have a 9A Dover Avenue map 104, lot 203, the RSA 4114A signing. We have the annual 18th annual Hampton Beach Master Sand, Master Sand Sculpture <laughs> Classic <laughs> Assistance. And we have a raffle permit for the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce. Also moved, Mr. Chairman. Moved, seconded by Jim. All those in favor? Unanimous. That's a tongue twister. I don't it? see Henry Fuller in the audience. I don't know the Northampton Water Commissioner. So why don't we hold that off yeah. for a while, and uh, we will we will come back to Henry if he shows up. Uh, next one is uh, Chief Ayot. Jumping at the bit, he kept jumping up there. And I know it. Well, good evening, and thank you very much for allowing me to come speak to you tonight. Uh, tonight we're going to talk to you um, in our quarterly report, but we're going to give you insight into the first third of 2018 for Hampton Fire Rescue. The winter season proved to be one that any New, England, any New Englander could be proud of and gave us the expected cold with numerous winter storms, several inches of snow, freezing temperatures, and driving winds. In total, we fielded 1,192 calls for service. There were 595 fire calls and 597 patient contacts. Like I said, we responded to 595 fire calls. This includes five structure fires here in Hampton and several structure fires as mutual aid. On New Year's Day, Engine 1 responded to a fire on Norman Road in Seabrook. Crews worked in a harsh winter conditions at a fire that unfortunately resulted in a fatality the first in the state of New Hampshire for 2018, and one of a total of 1,118 civilian home fatals, uh, fatal fires in the United States since the beginning of the year. Later that same week, Hampton responded to mutual aid um, in Hampton Falls, Exeter, Kensington for fires in their communities. Uh, on January 17th, during a snowstorm, crews responded to a structure fire and a duplex on Johnson Ave. Two families were left homeless and were assisted by the Red Cross to assist them with housing. On February 18th, in the early morning hours and also during a snowstorm, crews responded to a fire at the Emerald Isle Motel on Winnicunnet Road. The resident was at work at the time and uh, he was able to come home after the fire and we were greeted by him. The following Saturday, Hampton responded to a mutual aid fire in Greenland for a multiple alarm fire at an auto repair shop. In March, during blizzard conditions, crews responded to a well-involved house fire at 23 Driftwood Road. The homeowners were away at the time of the fire. 
As a result of the storm, power was out in the area, and Hampton Fire Alarm was not able to use the primary radio since the multiple power failures and lines down uh, caused the primary radio system to fail. We used backup system in order to um, direct crews as well as dispatch calls for most of the remainder of the day, and the system was restored by evening with the assistance of various agencies. Hampton Fire responded to Crossway Terrace, located at 454 Winnicunnet Road, for a structure fire, which was quickly extinguished. The resident suffered severe burns during the fire and was treated and transported to the hospital by our emergency personnel and uh, Northampton Fire and Rescue personnel and ambulance. And on April 5th, 2018, crews responded to a structure fire at 26 C Street, the Seawalk Apartments, and we were met by a rescue situation and heavy fire conditions on arrival. The resident was rescued over a ground ladder after she had jumped off the third floor deck onto an adjacent flat roof. This was a wind-driven fire. It was a very intense uh, fire and had the potential to become a major conflagration due to the wind direction and the proximity of nearby structures. Our crews did a tremendous job and were aggressive in stopping the fire from progressing. The on-duty shift was fully staffed with nine personnel. Two off-duty lieutenants responded from home with the initial alarm and <coughs> that brought the initial responding crews up to 11 people. We, respond, uh, we received mutual aid from 17 communities that night and were exceptionally grateful for their response. Emergency medical services side of the house saw 597 patient contacts during the first third of 2018. Of these, 418 patients were transported to one of our receiving hospitals. And closing in on a full year of service, we find that Seabrook freestanding ER is now the destination 20.5% of the time. Hampton EMS personnel responded to 14 calls for overdose and administered Narcan 16 times. They worked diligently on 10 cardiac arrests and treated 13 patients for acute coronary syndrome. These numbers are consistent with a comparison for the same time period for the last three years. We remain committed to providing high quality um, cardiopulmonary resuscitation training to the community. And since January, 150 people have received CPR training. And we're scheduled to teach CPR both to Unitil and Planet Fitness staff in the next few weeks. And I was just told today that we're also going to be teaching CPR to the FOSS manufacturing staff. We've already provided CPR and first aid training to a local home school group and the New Hampshire chapter of Sea Cadets. And we continue to expand our community outreach programs. 63 people have been trained in the national campaign to stop the bleed. This program aims to promote bystander first aid to traumatic injuries. The Stop the Bleed program has been very well received by all that have attended. We've, uh, we have trained personnel from Winnicott High School, Hampton Academy, Marston, and Center Schools. We've also provided training to 10 community members on March 31st, which was National Stop the Bleed Day. They participated in the training at headquarters and expressed that this was excellent training indeed. The new ambulance was delivered to, uh, from the manufacturer to Minuteman. It will be lettered and striped in the next two weeks, and we have scheduled the installation of the power load system and have notified the state that we will need to have the vehicle inspected on completion. We anticipate that the new ambulance will be in service before the summer season. Firefighter Kate Meehan and Firefighter Dean Sonis are scheduled to complete their paramedic training and graduate on May 22nd in 2018. They will be taking the National Regist Registry exam in the next few weeks following and will become full-fledged paramedics over the summer. We're very proud of their efforts. In fire prevention, the Fire Prevention Bureau performed 65 inspections, issued 44 permits, and collected $1,583.50 in the first third of 2018. The table provided, which the viewers at home, I'll read for them, um, it indicates the last three years, same time period. So 2018, we saw 65 inspections, issued 44 permits, and collected $1,583.50. For 2017, it was 69 um, inspections, 52 permits, $3,370.35. And in 2016, 46 inspections, 55 permits issued, $6,878.55. There is a drop in fees collected, but we can absolutely attest to the fact that um, it's due to the construction and the way things are being built. People aren't coming in for permits right now. They're continuing in, um, with construction. As you can see from Cornerstone, Spring Hill Estates, uh, all of the areas that are working right now, they've obtained their permits last year. So moving forward, the construction is still going on. The inspections are still going on, but that accounts for the, the change in fees collected. It's a very busy time of year for fire prevention as the seasonal businesses are opening up for the summer and inspections for permits of assembly and hoods and life safety are filling up the Fire Prevention Bureau's time. Our fire prevention officer, Bill Payne, has returned from the National Fire Academy where he spent two weeks uh, completing their fire investigation program. 
This training is essential for him to fulfill one of the primary aspects of his job at Hampton Fire. And he came back raving about the training, stating that it was excellent instruction with high quality instructors. We're also working to finalize the permits and prepare for the upcoming display firework shoots throughout the summer. A lot of work goes into the shows before the sky lights up. Currently, we're waiting on the permits to be returned from the company, and uh, we have been working with the Hampton Beach Area Commission to make that happen. Communications side of the house. Hampton Fire Alarm answered a total of 7,330 phone calls from New Year's Day to the end of April. Many of these calls were uh, for service needs during inclement weather, where power outages and flooding affected residents, or for fires that have already been reported. Fire Alarm was inundated with calls during the storms we experienced this winter season. During four of these storms, they also had to deal with significant fires. The most significant was the C Street fire, which went to a third alarm within 11 minutes from the first phone call. During this fire, where crews were giving radio reports, updates, responding to rescues, and more, Fire Alarm coordinated the response of 17 mutual aid companies, two of which were unable to assist. Therefore, they had to be bypassed in favor of another community. No radio transmission went unanswered, and all of the resources requested arrived ready to work. This was a tremendous effort. Great job. For administration, Hampton Fire Rescue has been active with the parent, teacher, and administration meetings both at uh, both the SAUs regarding the concerns for student safety, especially in light of the recent events in Parkland, Florida. We're continuing to work in concert with Hampton Police Department in developing our plans for response potential and for threats at our schools. In fact, we have four members attending training this week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, for an on-site um, training in Chumsford. We experienced several winter storms this season. We added storm coverage in order to handle the anticipated extra volume of calls and bolster the on-duty force to ensure proper management of all calls, which did cause overtime. And I am concerned that we are coming into our high summer season, and I want to ensure you that we're keeping a watchful eye on our bottom line, but I do have stress over that. We are waiting with bated breath for a word on our assistant to firefighters grant for replacement of mobile radios. We'll be sure to update the board when that information becomes available. Engine 2, the 2000 Pierce pumper that was purchased from Warminster, Pennsylvania, has been placed in service and is now part of the fleet. Marine 1 has had a new starboard side motor installed and has been serviced in preparation for the upcoming summer season. May is pump testing month and all will be tested and serviced as part of their annual preventative maintenance cycle. Ladder 1, our 2006 Pierce, will be leaving us for three weeks at the beginning of June. As a preventative maintenance, the truck will be repainted uh, to repair the significant and noticeable corrosion and cracking that's going on in the paint. And this is in order to extend its life of the vehicle. The funds for this were encumbered from the 2017 budget, as were Marine 1's motor. Engine 4, our 2016 Pierce pumper, um, which resides at the beach, responded to several calls during the blizzard and associated flooding in the area on January 4, 2018. As a result, several of the electrical components were exposed to salt water. Salt water and electrical components are not a good mix, and despite pressure washing the vehicle, the components began to corrode. The vehicle was evaluated by Minuteman and found to have extensive damage to the electrical system. Their recommendation was to have the truck returned to Pierce for a thorough overhaul to be sure to, of a proper fix. Primex was notified and evaluated the vehicle and concurred. Engine 4 was transported to Appleton, Wisconsin by flatbed trailer for repairs, and we do not have an estimated time yet for the repairs. As you are aware, the C Street fire left the soup kitchen without a home. With your indulgence, and thank you very much for it, they have been using the East Apparatus Base at the beach station while the, they work to find a new permanent home. This is, we're certainly glad to see that this has worked out for all involved. Hampton is an ever-growing community. New buildings, even new neighborhoods, are being introduced to all corners of town. We are exploring staffing and response models, and we look to report back to you soon. And I thank you very much. I'd be happy to answer any questions, if you have. Questions on his report? Mary Louise. Well, it's really too bad that you haven't been very busy. <laughs> right. <laughs> I will say, and, and I appreciated your report, that I would be willing to put you up uh, as a candidate for the understatement of the year because you said, we experienced several winter storms this season. Yes, we have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did. Yeah, that made me think. Now, I have several things <clears throat> for you and the department with the summer season coming up. Okay. First of all, you are understaffed. Is there any hope of getting any kind of grants? 
so that you can get a few more personnel in that department. Uh, I'm, I'm a, a civilian, but it looks to me like you certainly need eight more bodies in that department. Any hope for going after grants? And I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, I, I really do. The one thing about grants is that they're not guaranteed. You have to vie for them. And right. you're going up against other communities that have potentially greater needs. So you have to state the case. Uh, right now, what we, and, and as I discussed with the C Street fire, that night in particular, it was approximately 10 o'clock at night that the call came in for fire. Uh, there was no ambulance call going on, so I didn't have personnel that were at Seabrook ER or Portsmouth or Exeter. They were all in-house at the time, and they responded. That was a total of nine. Currently, we do something called running down, and we've talked about this offline before, but running down, if there's uh, a captain that's out, he gets replaced one for one. Mm -hmm. If there's a lieutenant, they, they get replaced one for one. On the firefighter side, um, when the seven firefighters were fully staffed, if one takes vacation, if one's sick, or if there's somebody who's injured, then that person is left unfilled. So we'll run down to eight. Um, in running down, we're doing that as a financial responsibility to maintain that side of the house. Uh, it's not the best idea for staffing. I would like to discuss mm -hmm. in the future uh, moving to maintain nine at all times, minimum. The idea of adding staff, especially through a grant, the, the grant for that is the SAFER grant, which is um, a federally funded FEMA grant. That changes yearly, the, the way the, the funding works. Um, it's a partial funding, it's not a full funding. Uh, this year, as far as I know, it was 65% and 35% for the first two years, and then the town bore the higher responsibility in the third year, um, and you, I believe it was 75-25, where you would take 75% of the cost as the town. Um, don't quote me on that, I could be wrong on that one. So the SAFER grant requires certain things, and you have to meet certain standards. Um, it was by our FEMA rep, he told us that in order to do that, you have to be going towards uh, national goals. And, for us, the national goal for career fire would be uh, NFPA standard 1710. That's a very difficult standard to meet for a small community. But you can do so looking at mutual aid and their response and getting your numbers up. But they have to be going towards the national standard. Currently, the NFPA prescribes that on a first alarm fire response with fire showing, if somebody's going to a fire, there should be 17 people responding. Currently, if we have nine, that means that we have to have two outside mutual aid agencies as well as all the chief staff's um, officers coming in. If we were looking at that from a perspective of getting staffing through a SAFER grant, the, the, the way it was explained to me, okay, and I haven't done the, the far out research on it, but the way it was explained to me is that you would need to be going towards this and one mutual aid response would be okay. So an engine coming in from another community with three people on it could be added to your mix. If we had nine, and brought it up to 10 with the staff officers and additional engine coming from outside, we would get to 17. Right now, it would take two fire engines with three and three from two different communities to bring us up to that level. So I don't know that we would be awarded the grant based on that. Good so grief. We can't, we can't guarantee a grant anyway. That's, we certainly tried last year for an AFG grant for radios, and we, we didn't get a grant. We're trying again this year for the same thing. So it's not something that I would rely upon. But like I said to you at the end there, we're looking at staffing models. We're growing as a community. And um, it's certainly something that we're looking to explore. Hope springeth eternal, I guess right. we could say. Um, we're going into the summer season. Right. This should scare everybody because all of the incidents that are related in here are off season. That's true. It's not summer yet, in spite of the fact that you just had a few little storms in there. Now, um, ambulances at the beach, and I've had people call me on this. Um, one ambulance at the beach this year, of course, that means staffing, and you're also trying to staff a boat. Uh, probably, ideally, we should have two ambulances at the beach in the summer season with all the people that come in. Uh, have you a feel for where you're going with the ambulance service at the beach once we hit the summer season? Currently, our, our goal is to maintain. As you know, that we have, um, we have an arrangement where the, the ambulance is stationed at headquarters right now, 141 Econet Road, mm -hmm. and the beach fire station, if, there, if we are down to one paramedic per day, uh, if another paramedic is sick or injured or something like that, the one paramedic that's 
that's on duty per day will be stationed on engine four or engine two now, engine three now, down at the beach fire station uh, for a quick response. They're bringing all of the same equipment. The transport vehicle comes as the ambulance, but the medical treatment is getting there directly with the engine response, which is <coughs> the fire station. As far as staffing a second ambulance, that would require, to me, in order to do it appropriately, it would require 10 people per day. And let me tell you why. Because we need to have an engine uptown yeah. to respond to fire calls. Yeah. We need an ambulance, which requires two people to yeah. do that. If that's the case uptown, it's the case at the beach as well, and we have a fire engine at the beach for our highest hazard district, that needs to maintain three people, a lieutenant and yeah. two firefighters. Yeah. The ambulance would need to function the same way, which means two people. So to get there, that would be such a quantum leap to say that we're going... Right now, I, I'm trying to propose that we stay, that we get to nine and maintain that level. The quantum leap to get to 10 would certainly be something that must be explored, but we're you know we're dealing with um taxpayer dollars and we don't want to do so unwisely we want to spend their their money very you know seriously and make sure that they get the best bang for the buck now in addition to one ambulance mm -hmm. at the beach you have paramedics in house in case people come up to the fire station and need a little help. Maybe they cut themselves or on sure. the beach or whatever. So you're still expected to respond to walk-ins, if you will. Sure. Right? Walk-in yes. medical aids, yep. Uh, hmm. With the size of the town, at the rate we are growing, and with uh, the burden placed on this town with, with the beach uh, in the summer, um, I... I don't know how you're doing it, frankly. I I applaud what you're trying to do, but it's I don't know me. how it's you're doing it. It's not me. It's the crews. They're doing a tremendous job. Number and next one is I would like to see Mr. Chairman, if no one objects, to ask the chief to produce enough reports to give to the budget committee. Just more copies of the report that he just gave us for the budget committee at the next meeting. Just stick it in the budget committee slot or whatever. But I think it would be a very good idea. This is very a very comprehensive report, and I would like to see that uh, provided to the budget I don't committee. have a problem with that. Thank you. May we do that? And uh, I asked you earlier today yes, about action wipes, and I wasn't familiar with those, but would you mind describing to the public? Because I think that's a, a great extra tool that you are using, and I just found out about it by accident, just watching the news on NECN a couple of nights ago. Sure. And especially with the concern over cancer, would you mind explaining that to the board? Sure. So in a method to decontaminate, uh, leaving a fire building and then getting before getting into the uh, rig to come home, um, we're doing gross decon. And at any fire scene, you might see that the firefighters are being hosed down and yeah. to get off the, the larger material. Mm -hmm. But on skin especially the neck, uh, under the hood, hands, face, yes. uh, areas where soot is going to accumulate any type of carbon. Um, we're using essentially baby wipes. Mm -hmm. They're like baby wipes. And they don't have uh, fragrance or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They're not going to hurt our gear. They're designed to work in concert with that. But they're taking off the, the largest portion um, on the hands, on the face, so that they can remove that carcinogen at least in part, you know, um, by sitting on their skin, they, they remove it before they get in the truck and come home. We've made some major changes, especially in light of the fact that we've, uh, we've experienced cancer and its loss mm -hmm. in our fire department. And um, Tuesday, Tuesday, May 15th, will be our two-year anniversary for Firefighter College. Yep. So it's something that's uh, near and dear to our hearts, and um, it's a very emotional subject for us. Mm -hmm. um, right now, the captains and the lieutenants know that if there's a fire in town or out of town, they're, they're allowed to take the utility truck so that the crews can take off their gear and bring it back, not in the cab with them while they're riding home, mm -hmm. put the gear into the uh, washer and the extractor, and then dry it. And then um, all, all the guys will be taking a shower and, and all the firefighters will be taking showers, cleaning up. Uh, we actually have agreements with our mutual aid companies who are coming in and we're doing the same for them. Um, if they come back from a fire and they're going to take a shower, we're going to stay an extra few minutes, probably be about 10 minutes longer, and then taking showers, everybody's going to get cleaned up. That's our goal. So it's a cycle, but we're starting to really bring that home. I appreciate that you're doing that, and I was given to understand from watching the presentation on NECN that even leaving the poisonous substances on your skin for Exposure. a while, 
your skin can absorb these things and cause greater risk. For years, um, they always thought, and, and it's not hard to imagine that breathing the smoke and the soot and the byproducts combustion was a big problem, and it is. Yes. Um, but we developed the SCBA, the self-contained breathing apparatus, see the masks, mm -hmm. see the bottles. Um, that does a tremendous job. But then the exposure, they were saying, well, it's transdermal, so you got to watch out where your skin is. So then we became fully encapsulated, hands, feet, everything. Uh, now they're finding that, and they've done studies in heated environments, um, your skin transdermally is able to absorb more carcinogens, but it's coming through the gear. It's actually surrounding you while you're encapsulated, and so people are being exposed that way. That's why they're coming home without gear on. They're not contaminating that, that environment, and then they're taking a shower immediately. But with this report and with the activity you've had so far this year, uh, that's a that's a wake up call. I have a couple of questions under the turnout, but that's okay. I'm we'll go, finished. Let's finish this part first, and then we'll go. Well, to the he's turnout. on turnout. I'm I'm finished with this part. All I, right, let's I, uh, let everybody else talk about it first, and then we'll get to turnout. Yes, that's okay. what I said. Regina, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I had my ears being bent too about the ambulance down the beach. I know we talked about that before. Yes, yep. So what you're saying is engine four, which is not with us right now. <laughs> it's currently engine three, right? right is yep. engine three pretty much has everything that an ambulance has except for a way to get the person correct to the hospital? All of so, the medication, all of the the um, cardiac monitor, the um, trauma equipment, it's all there, and they're able to provide initial care just as if they were taking the equipment off the ambulance. Okay. The ambulance arrives, and then they'll be able to transport. Um, oftentimes, our ambulance might be at another facility. It might be at the Exeter Hospital. It could be at Seabrook ER. And sometimes we need mutual aid. The, the fire where we talked about that, all of our crews responded as firefighters to 454 Winnicott Road. So we needed another outside mutual aid ambulance to come in to transport the patient. But he was already being rendered care by our providers that were on scene. So they were able to use the equipment that's on engine one and engine that day, engine three, to provide the care. And then he was transported by Northampton. Okay. And I do, I agree with Mary Louise that it's, I mean, it's, this is the first four months of the year, and yeah. the fires and the storms, the word tremendous is a huge understatement. I mean, you guys are great. I, I wasn't here for the April one, but, I mean, I saw pictures, and it was just, it was like a movie. It was. I mean, the C Street fire, it was yeah. just amazing Yeah, the, and how you guys uh, they did a great job. handled that fire. So thank you very much. And didn't, last year was it that we had asked the state about whether or not they'd split the cost with us? As far and they as they said no, yeah. Yeah, and they said no, right. But yeah. that wasn't, how much was that? Was that like about $80,000? What do you Does anyone it, it was about, well, last last year's dollars, it was about 35000 for us and 45000 for the state. So in order to, to yeah, meet in the middle. 45, 49, and somewhere around there. I and that wasn't, that wasn't a 24 hour coverage. We were doing a day coverage there. So it wasn't a full 24 hours from, I think we started July. I think I started July 6th because of the dates of the, the request through Labor Day. But we were talking about splitting the cost roughly $35,000, $40,000, and that was yeah. refused. But luckily, oh. the mutual aid that you have with the town Tremendous. is exceptional. Absolutely. So, and they're bringing the same level of care. We have right. paramedics in Seabrook. We have paramedics in Northampton. So, you know, we're, we're not failing on that end. Right. I want you to know that. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Jim. Yeah, I just want to, we're, we're talking about staffing. We're talking about a variety of things. Currently, do you feel you're providing a safe environment for the people, ambulance-wise, fire-wise? I do. I would like to see our staffing stay at 9, obviously, and that's why I'd like to talk to you about that again in the future. Okay. But, um, yeah, we're doing, a, the, the crews are just doing a tremendous job. Absolutely. Okay. So in this year's budget, when you develop it and stuff, you'll be talking I about? Will. Yes, sir. That with, with us and with the budget of committee? Course. and Because it is taxpayer dollars. That and we have about. to be wise to that, absolutely. And people have to approve it. Right. We're going, to, we're going to have it. You know, you said you're going to Seabrook to the emergency room 20% of the time now. That's true. Is that a large increase? Well, it was. if or you remember, we, we, brought, we actually yeah. brought them in to talk to you. They started June 1st. Okay. So it was zero yeah. last year. Um, now it's 20% of our call volume. The crews go there. They have one physician on duty there. But their, um, their method of care and what they're able to handle the turnaround time for our crews is significantly faster. Mm. Uh, for smaller, especially smaller items, they're able to go there. Um, if, it's a, if it's a person who's having a cardiac event and they need to have intervention immediately, they know to go to the right facility for it. If it's a major trauma, they'll go to anywhere that they need to bring the patient. 
but um, the people are also responding and they want to go to Seabrook here, so it's working out pretty well. It's a cost savings going there? Uh, well, it's a shorter duration turnaround for us, so certainly. So we're in turn a vehicle, fuel, absolutely. And what would the percent increase of calls this year be over last year, coming up to the summer? Coming up to the summer, we're approximately even with last year and the year before for EMS. Okay. Um, we are down this year. Um, it's, it's strange because if you look at the call volume versus call severity on both sides of the house, fire and EMS, I would say that this year our call volume is slightly down, but the intensity of the calls <coughs> is raised. We had more significant fire in 2018 than we did in 2017 for the same time frame. So we had more fires, um, more fire calls last year, less fire calls this year than last by, I think it was 20, and I didn't provide that number, I apologize. It was a small number, but the severity of the calls, the significance of the calls was certainly elevated this year. Thank you. Thank you for the report. Rick. Yeah, um, you know, all through the years, it's been very important, uh, the, uh, the shared response that we've done. And Hampton's always done their share for the other communities, just like the other communities do their share for Hampton. So it's always been an important part. This is nothing new. Right. Uh, it's always been an important part of our plan. Um, I just wanted to say, I understand that, that uh, uh, the place in Seabrook actually isn't that busy. Um, they've had, through the winter particularly, it was not, yeah. it, business is not as good as they would like it to be. Uh, they're hoping that it will be busier during the um, summertime, um, from what I understand. Uh, but it is good that we have the opportunity to go there, and I keep hear from just people I know that more and more people stop over there. I guess they're opening another one in Dover, from what I understand. Um, and, you know, they seem to be growing quite a bit at Portsmouth Hospital to begin with. Uh, I don't know if the same is true as for Exeter Hospital, but Portsmouth Hospital seems to be growing quite a bit. They are, and um, they undertook a, a great um, challenge to become level two trauma certified. And currently Exeter is undergoing a challenge to go to level three trauma certification. Wow. So everybody's growing in the area, for sure. Mm -hmm. So is, uh, which is uh, a stronger trauma play, th three or two? Two. Two. So more capabilities. Um, level one trauma centers, uh, Mass General, that sort of place like that, um, they're usually associated with a teaching hospital. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the other side of the house. You know, they, they bring in students and residents. Uh, level two, there's less research going on, but the their capabilities are the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Well, it's good. I'm glad to, your report's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I got a couple things. Yes, sir. Um, Vehicles for the storm. I know you got a couple parked outside there right now that you borrowed from somebody else. And uh, are we going to start to look at some for us? Um, we are. I do believe that Chief Sawyer has been on that. Uh, the police side of the the Homeland Security grants, um, they seem to have a much more efficient path to acquiring vehicles. Um, as far as I know, the green vehicle that you see over at Headquarters Station has been acquired, and I don't know that it, it's not. But um, that was at least at the time we thought that it was. The beige vehicle, the five-ton truck, belongs to Newton Highway. And uh, we've retained it. We're actually looking to bring that back as soon as possible. So, okay. But um, we're going to look at down the road. We are. Eventually getting some that. of our own. for So right. we're not putting fire trucks in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Hopefully>. Exactly right. <laughs> Absolutely. They're not submarines. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, I was at the fire at April in April down so the yeah, beach yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys did one heck of a job. Oh, yeah. sure uh, uh, the manpower, and I know you spoke about the dispatcher too, but I mean, that that fire with what you had there in the in the, in the volume of fire you had in that shorter part of, part of time, I was surprised we didn't lose more of that block. I was very surprised. Uh, but you did a great job at, at getting into mutual aid, and fortunately you were at nine men when you did it, and the ambulance wasn't out of town. So again, thank you to your men mm. and women of the fire department. Yeah, absolutely, all the uh, firefighters. They did a, a great job. Uh, career day the other day over to uh, Hampton Academy, well, Hampton Middle School. It's not the academy anymore. Uh, it is uh, it, the academy. Well, the uh, Hampton Academy Middle School, not junior high. So, uh, so Captain Cutting and Kate Meehan. Yes, both <clears throat> of them were over there and uh, representing you well. 
and it was it was good to see that. It's good to see you guys getting out and doing a lot of that stuff. I know you've done a lot with the with the, the CPR mannequins and stuff like that, and it's it's good to see your employees out there doing that. Uh, kudos also. Um, I spoke with the, one of the ladies that works at the soup kitchen. She could not believe the response she got from the firefighters down there and the, yeah. the fire officers that were helping them move stuff around, doing whatever they need, and you having it in there. It was, it, we know it was a short time and it was an inconvenience to your, your guys, but I know the community really appreciated you guys having that there. Um, and I want to I speak on the manpower. You know, I talked about that back at, our last, at the end of our last budget session. And I really think we do need to concentrate, especially this summer on the nine. And we might want to see how, what it would cost us to do that over the summer months. If you could bring that back to us, I think, I think you'd have the support of this board yeah. um, because it, it has showed how important it is. And then we should look at going to the ten eventually. Yes. But we really should concentrate first more on getting the nine men. So, um, other than that, great report. Oh. Just one more quick follow-up in this because I did forget to mention the boat. He's not only responsible for the ambulance responses at the beach, but he's got to staff that boat. Yep. Especially. Just in the so you know, that that's not separately staffed. That's no, that's cross trained. So they come from. I realize. Okay. I realize that. Yeah. But that's still men. Uh, yeah, and the if boat. there's a boat call, everybody goes. Yes. Everybody goes. Yes. So. The, but that's the, the fire service, and that's the way it's been. You take one call at a time, and, you, and you deal with what you got and what you have with who you have. Right. Uh, so, all right, the next uh, thing is turnout gear, fire turnout gear. C could we possibly do the donation first, because that should be real quick. Okay, then... we could do the donation. Uh, sure. I'll also move that we accept the donation of the CPR mannequin to Hampton Fire Rescue from the Girl Scouts, which is you very nice. Talk, speak about it at all? Or? So our EMS officer, Nate Denio, had received a request from the Girl Scouts. Uh, they wish to donate a CPR mannequin to Hampton Fire Rescue uh, to assist in the delivery of CPR education. The Girl Scouts have been through the program and received CPR training and first aid from Hampton for some time now. As a part of the community service, um, they are required to donate part of the cookie sale profits. They feel that this would accomplish two goals because they'd be giving back to the community and they'd also be bringing this training to more people. Uh, we asked for this uh, acceptance through the, through the board for a total cost of $138.97. This is a CPR mannequin that gives instant feedback, so it lets you know how you're doing, uh, which is a new AHA standard. We have uh, several of those now, and this would be an additional one which would help us at least do three or four more people per class. I already have a motion from Mary Louise. I'll yep. second. Seconded by Regina. All those in favor? Unanimous. So, okay, now we will talk about the fire turnout gear, okay? Uh -huh. Mary Louise, you brought yes, that up. You wanted to. I did because I am concerned about this. I'm going to ask Fred to help first here because we had a discussion um, on how we could explain the the fund uh, setup that you explained to me, Fred, if you'd be so kind, so that we can keep on top of this. We cannot have um, a lack of uh, proper turnout gear with proper dates. It can't be more than 10 years old in modern days. Would you explain to the board what you told me about the... Um... I'll give it my best shot. Please, thank you. Uh, if we have uh, two sets of gear, complete gear, certified gear for each firefighter, that's 80 pieces of equipment, basically. Yes. And that's a cost of $240,000, which is something we don't want to front up all at once somewhere. My suggestion to the board is that we, we put together an account uh, separate from the budget, and we put $138,000 or one half, about one half of that in the budget, in the, in the account. And then we put in um, one, one tenth of the cost of the two hundred and forty thousand or twenty four hundred dollars a year, uh, twenty four thousand dollars a year, <clears throat> uh, in that account, and then we just draw down as we need the equipment by date and replace it as it comes along. That'll always give us a cushion in there. We won't have to worry about putting money in; it'll be there. If there's a year we have to skip, we can afford to do that, um, and that will solve the problem. But. We have to keep on top of the problem in order to do that, and that's the only way, real way to do it. It's like the ambulances. You know you're going to buy it. 
you know, yeah. you, you, you have to have it. be replaced every, yeah. so often. So we should be able to. Every 10 years, if we put the $138,000 in and we put in $24,000 a year every year, yeah. we should be able to do that for 20 or 30 years before we really have to start increasing the cost. Yeah. We'd have a little interest on that account, right? We would. We earn yeah. interest on it? We would. Um, the other thing, well, what concerns me looking at the list, first of all, you have some individuals in your department retire. So they have to be replaced by another firefighter, but the incoming firefighter may not be the same size Correct. as the outgoing firefighter. So you're going to need new gear. Um, if I look at this, you've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 11 firefighters here whose gear uh, needs to be replaced uh, because their gear is dated in 2009. So next year is 2019. Next year's our 10 year. And you're at your 10 year limit. And it looks like this hasn't been focused on in recent years. We should never be getting to a point where everybody's gear is, is um, coming up for replacement together. In addition, the secondary gear. How many, I see gaps in this list, Chief. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> some, and some of the pants and coats are different years. Um, I don't. How do we get this figured out? How do we get well, back on if a If you remember in 2015, um, as a new fire chief, yes. I had brought forward the idea that we were going to be in trouble in 2019 with gears because, big gear issues because uh, in 2009, there was an like AFG that. grant that came through and there were 33 sets purchased. Yeah. So I made a proposal to the board and the board supported it. At the time, what I was looking to do was begin a program replacement for primary sets of gear so that when 2019 hit, we wouldn't all be looking to re yes. review it all. Um, so to that end, that first year we requested six sets and then four subsequent sets per year, every year. Mm -hmm. Currently, um, our vendor was in last week measuring the last two. Um, so the measurements are off to the vendor right now and we're going to get four sets this year. We got four sets last year. We got four sets the year before. We got six sets before that. There are five sets remaining to be purchased plus a set of pants and a set of coats um, vice versa, one for one firefighter, one for another. Lieutenant Gannon um, had gotten, uh, his gear was damaged at the DBW fire when we had a DBW shed fire. So he needed new pants, we bought him new pants then. His jacket now needs to be replaced. So what we've done is we've done um, upgrades as needed. We've done repairs as needed. The new firefighters that we've hired, and we've hired a lot of new firefighters in the last three, four years, um, they've all gotten new gear. So what we're doing right now is their primary sets are within the time frame that we need. The idea of having a secondary set is imperative, but it's not free. Ooh. So in order to do that, there has to be management. But I sat before the board in 2015 and told you that we needed the primary set to be within date. And so that was my goal spelled out. And I didn't want to hammer too hard on the budget. I didn't want to do that all at once. So we did it in a program phased in type of uh, purchase. So right now, what you're seeing, there are five, if I'm not mistaken, next year we're, we're due to replace five sets and we'll be complete. Well, it's showing 10 here. He said he already has four that are coming now. Right. So well, they'll come from that list. Left. There's, there's five with a, with a pair of, uh, with a jacket. I, I think we should let him take care of this. I understand that, but we are... Tr so, and Mr. Mr. Welch and I have had long conversations about this, and he's uh, he certainly um, got a, a beat on this, and he understands what he wants I've to do with the article. I've heard Mr. Welch talk about it, too, and I think right. we should let the people that are in charge do it. It's not up I, to us. I Well, it is up to us, because we're well, going to be funding this. I think we this. need to listen there to are the ten, people that are the head of these here departments. Whose primary date is 2009. Okay. He's I the can police read. chief. Mr. Welch he's knows what he's doing. Yeah, but I can read. Okay. Yeah. I think that you ought to go read and a book. I just want to make sure. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's bring these, it back. Let's bring it back under. First of all. I, I, have, I have another question okay. related to this. I remember when the new beach station mm -hmm. was built. Right. And if I recall correctly, you had two brand new washing machines. One. We bought one brand new one, and we had the one that was at Winnicott Road re, uh, okay. replaced, moved over. 
Do you have washing machines uptown? I literally yes. don't remember. I have one extractor at each fire station, yes. Okay. <clears throat> and one dryer. But you have nine people out there, or however many yep. respond to a fire. So... In the course of 24 hours, it, in the course of 30 hours, we can wash all sets of gear that were at that fire. Okay. But so, that's where the secondary... Correct. So gear as, comes in. As that gear is being laundered. Because if you have another they fire... Another, right. They have to respond. They're using... Right. Exactly right. So the secondary gear looks a little um, <clears throat> tricky here, too. 16 years old. But the uh, gear was bought in 2002. I've got two of those, three of those. Therefore... Again, not, not free, right? So I've actually discussed with Mr. Welch, and last week we were uh, required, the department's heads were required to submit our capital improvement plan. Yeah. And for 2019, I actually put in for um, a, a second set of gear for $130,000, um, 40 sets of gear um, as part of the capital improvement. Now, Mr. Welch's idea would certainly do one better and give us an, you know, a longer duration than one-time purchase. Um, so that's certainly up to Mr. Welch and the board to decide, but we did look at that as a capital improvement because it is a capital improvement. There's a lot of money there to be spent. So but this is 2018 right here. Are we we're... doing budgeting tonight or what? I'm getting, I think that this is ridiculous. That it, this is we we have talked about it. I, I believe the fire chief has explained what his proposal is. I also believe the town manager has explained what he would like to see done. And as we move forward with the budgeting process, we will bring that back. It's not up to us um, to run the department. So can we well, go around and, and have yeah, other people yep, talk? Yep. So I think we have every right to ask particularly. Well, and we asked so particularly. That, I'd like to hear from somebody else on the board. This is public safety. I'd like to hear from right. somebody else on the Regina. board. What if he has five more fires? Well, yeah, well, there's a lot of what ifs right now, but I like to say that one since you have come on board you've been fairly aggressive in yes, tackling this and obviously you're going to make sure all the primaries are there before we start working on the secondaries ideally yeah looking over here yeah there's a lot of things that are old but it looks like between you and the town manager you got it worked out and you know you've gone through the primaries so the next logical step would be to work on the secondary so i see that is in process of what's going to happen yes, is that correct yeah. yes thank you <clears throat> jim yeah, I'd just like to say that you've had a plan in effect, right? Yes, sir. You've been dealing with it. Yes, sir. You've come for money in the budget. Yes, sir. Do we have a lot of complaints from the firefighters about it? No. No. So we're working cooperatively to make sure that we have a safe environment. Yes, sir. And I think this board supports that totally. I can and I, I, I don't know. I was getting the impression that you weren't. I was getting the impression that somebody was saying it wasn't being dealt with, and I don't think that that's the case. I think it's being dealt with up front. And I think we'll continue to deal with it up front. Rick? And I've heard Mr. Welch discuss it, and I've, uh, you know, I've listened to you in the past. I think everyone's doing a good job. I don't think it's our job here at the Board of Selectmen to run your department or Mr. Welch's department. So I'm happy with the way it's going. I think you do a good job, and if there's anything you need, you need to bring it up. We, I've heard the uh, that there are, you know, uh, one member of the board feels that something's not right here, mm -hmm. but I think you're doing a great job, and I think Mr. Welch is doing a good job, Thank and I'm, I think it's sufficient. We're not talking about budgets here tonight. Thank you. I think, you. I think the, uh, the gear is in much better shape than when I used to be on the fire department. <laughs> I mean, we had it's canvas bad. patches on, on coats. Right. Uh, you've done a much better job. You've brought it. You've got a long way to go. Right. But you've traveled a long distance, sir. Mm -hmm. um, I can see a point where you're gonna you want to get by next year. You want to have all the primary sets of gear at least by that 2019 because you did buy a lot of them at that point in time. Uh, and I like Mr. Welch's idea on, on on starting up a capital improvement fund mm -hmm. for the gear. I think that's a, a, a correct way to go because it's it's not something that you buy once and then don't have to buy again. That's true. It's something that has to be replaced constantly. When you know, and you, you've got people with two different t dates of gear on. Well, that's because if something gets damaged, you've got to replace it to do it. That happens. That's part of it. But I think you, you're doing a great job. Keep doing the good work on on making sure that the guys are protected 
make sure they're safe. We'll continue to work on the, on the gear. Um, and I don't think. Rusty, yes. what's the standard? Ten years. Ten years. That's what, and that's what he's working on. Ten years max. Yep. On, years. on the, So on. we still have another year and a half. Right. So I anticipate that the primary sets will be taken care of, as I told the board in 2015, by the ma the marching out of time, and the purchases. I believe that we will accomplish what we need to for primary sets by then. Now the other side of the coin is that buying everything at once means that in 10 years' time yes. you need to buy it all, you get all, again, all at once. So that's here. why you have. It the, seems like the grants in the past did some good in this play, this area. Absolutely. This is maybe a better area to dis to discuss grants. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. That's, that's all we have from you. Okay, wonderful. Have a great night. Thank all you right, so much. All right, thank you. Ed Tinker, 2018, first half, property tax warrant. Good evening, Good evening I'll Ed. try to be quick. <laughs> um, presented to you was the uh, first half uh, yep. warrant. Property tax warrant. Um, the amount is twenty-seven million three hundred seventy-five thousand and seven hundred and forty-six dollars. Okay. It represents about an eight tenth of a percent increase in taxable value this year. Um, as of course you know, April first is a cutoff date, so there's a lot of development out there that's under construction as of April first. Uh, a lot more value to be picked up, but again, that would take place uh, for next April first. Um, so that's where we're at for this year. Uh, those numbers may change slightly with the continued field work that we're doing this summer, uh, permit review, uh, smaller items may change a little bit, but it won't be drastic uh, until next April. So just if you have any questions and just looking for an approval and uh, signing of the warrant so I can give that to the tax collector. Mary Louise. Are we sending a bill to the state? No bill to the state. Oh, that's too bad. Regina. I have nothing. Thank you very much. Ed. Thank you, Ed. Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. You're welcome. So you need a motion to? Yeah, there's a yes, warrant for signatures. So All right. A motion. Jim number. will make the motion to sign the Second. warrant. Seconded by Rick. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. There you go. Appreciate it. Still not seeing Henry Flu Fuller in the audience. No. Do we want to discuss the hydrants? I think we got to wait for Henry. Yeah, He's the one who wants to discuss them. All right, so, so I'll make the motion that we put this on next week's agenda and, and notify Henry. I'll, okay. I'll call Henry That's and ask good. him. All right, yeah. motion seconded. Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. All right. Town manager's report. Mr. Uh -huh. Chairman, members of the board, um, the town clerk's office is going to be closed on Wednesday, March 16th. Uh, the state requires training for all town clerk personnel, and they will be closed that day in order to complete that state requirement. Uh, the town clerk would uh, like to remind everyone that uh, please register your dog. All dog licenses did expire on April 30th. We have approximately a little over 800 licenses left to issue. Oh, my. Uh, and that's down considerably from the, uh, the lack of licensing last year. Yeah. So we've been getting a lot of folks coming in to register their dogs, which is great. Uh, it gets it out of the way, and it costs the taxpayers less money, even the dog owners, if you do it up front. Household Hazardous Waste Collection is June 23rd. Please check the website for specific information. There are some things that will not be collected at the uh, Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day, so you, you need to know uh, what those are. People bring things like uh, um, water-based paint, which is not a hazardous waste, so um, this will hopefully save them from having to bring things and then take them home. The post office food drive is May 12th. Please leave your non-perishable donations in your mailbox or next to it. <clears throat> Town Beach cleanup is complete, thank goodness, and they, they did an excellent job on it. The next election is in September, and it's a primary. Uh, the supervisor of the checklist wants you to check your party affiliation. If you need to make changes, it has to be done by June 4th by statute. Forest cleanup is this Saturday, May 12th, 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Volunteers are needed. Information and sign up, call 929-5808. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you've also, the board has also been invited to participate <laughs> on Monday, March 28th, 2018. In Memorial Day exercises <clears throat> with the American 28th. Legion. Excuse me. You mean May, Fred? May, yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see. 8 a.m. is at the Hampton Beach Marine Memorial. 
9 a.m. is at the Hampton Falls Weir, uh, Weir Common. Uh, 10 a.m. is at the Hampton Northampton Parade, and 11:30 a.m. is at the Hampton Parade. Wow. Also, we have, uh, and I think we've been talking about this for several weeks. There is a public hearing on May 12, 2018, at the Marston School. May 10th. 10th. Uh, May, May 10th. Yes. Okay. I'm getting one. 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 I'm getting a week ahead of myself here. May 10th, 2018, at the Marston School, seven to nine. Uh, this deals with the traffic flow projections of the Route 1, 1A one reconstruction, beach traffic flow plans, parking areas and traffic, and pedestrian safety. Please, 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 please go. Um, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, we just received um, our request for a renewal of our cable license, mm -hmm. and uh, we have talked about this before. I'm going to recommend that the Board of Selectmen appoint a cable renewal committee. And on that committee, I would suggest you may certainly add or, add or delete any anyone you wish, at least one selectman, one member of the school board, because uh -huh. they also have a cable channel. That's good. Uh, myself and the deputy town manager, or either or, uh, the superintendent of the schools of SAU 70, two members 90. of... Yeah. 70 or 90? SAU 90. 90. 90. Uh, two members of the cable committee. Uh, the two paid cable employees, one for the school and one for the town, and two members of the general public. Wow. I nominate Mary Louise. You just want to scare them this year. Well, you're well, a good person to do it. You haven't been here before. Well, let's, let's bring it back first, well, after he's done his report, and then we'll... That's it, Mr. Chairman. That's okay. That's, well, one more thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. You're, you're right. And here it is. It slides right out of my hand. Um, for those people who are so-called the stakeholders, uh, Well 22, uh, the testing wow. of Well 22 has been put forward to the week of May 21, so some additional logistics for the installing the pump can be taken care of. Oh, good. That okay. Keep people happy. So we have questions on the town manager's report. Mary Louise. No, I was going to wait till a little business. I'm not <laughs> going to address any of that. Regina. I'm good, thank you. I would just like to stress what you, the town manager talked about, the hazardous waste on June 23rd. Yes. That people take advantage of that and yes. make sure that anything that is hazardous goes to the appropriate yeah. place rather than being dumped in the marsh or in yes. the water. It's, very, it's crucial. They've got the opportunity to do that. So I think it's very important. And along with that, I'd like to just say that I'm the selectman's representative to the cable committee, so I would be like to be the one that is on you that. You would like to do it? Yes. Good man. Okay. So then I'll nominate him. So. I'll second. <laughs> All right. Jim, sec I mean, uh, Rick, seconded by Regina for Jim as the cable committee representative. You got it. And I would like to also see the rest of that list filled out. Yep. So if you could, uh, I think the town manager or or Jamie, one or the other, yeah. whichever one feels has, has the time to deal with it. Um, you can pass it off to him if you'd like, or you can okay. take it yourself. I, I don't mind doing it. I've written a couple of cable contracts myself and a couple of cable licenses, so I'm a okay. little familiar That's with the process. Good. And then the rest of them, uh, school can talk to school, let discussion. the school do that, right. and then we will put those other people in. Very good. As, as you and see you fit. need two members need. of the general public. So we're putting it out there to the general public. If you'd like to serve on the cable contract committee, is that the way it's? Renewal. Renewal contract. committee. Okay. Cable renewal contract committee yeah. please get a hold of the town manager's office uh, we are looking for two citizens from the public and yeah. we'll do that okay very good very good old business joint meeting with the planning board Mary Louise? yes uh, we had a brief discussion at our meeting last week the planning board was talking about giving uh, up one of its scheduled nights uh, to meet uh, together. Um, I talked with Fred and he said it might be uh, more sensible for both boards to meet on say neutral ground or neutral evening. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the planning board is open to uh, sitting down and uh, we had a very uh, pleasant meeting last week. Okay, I will meet with the, uh, I'll get a hold of the chair, the chair over there and we'll see when we can meet. Uh, it's mutually mutually yeah. agreed upon right and we're gonna have a specific agenda for that right yes excellent 
so yes. that we, we we're not just coming in and just talking right yeah. right there'll yeah. be specific agenda okay. so if if uh, I will talk to him and see what he wants to set up for the agenda and then uh, I'll get back to you guys okay Great. okay uh, new business I have oh, one thing oh, on sorry. old business sorry Mr. Chairman uh, I just wanted to just summarize there's some news on Coakley and the EPA yes mm. uh, EPA orders changes to Coakley landfill hold on I just landfill bedrock study and Robert hold on I gotta get some Robert Hell I think who is one second here sorry Richard Hell I'm sorry who is the remedial project manager mm. stated the CLG shall prepare a final work plan that incorporates the comments and conditions above and includes the schedule for implementation of the final work plan and submission of a final report. Pretty much what he has come to the conclusion is what they are doing is not detailed enough and not catered enough to what's going on. So <coughs> I would just like to say that this is probably the direct result of all the work that Representative Mindy Mesmer has done yeah. and that the EPA and NH and New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services are really going to be looking at what's going on at Coakley and it's great news. Go on to Absolutely. let everyone know. I, had, uh, well, I just uh, follow up on that, Regina. I think sure. one of the things that was mentioned in the newspaper article was that the uh, Mr. Hall is uh, apparently going to follow up on a suggestion that we've been making repeatedly through Professor Ballesteros report that indicates that there is a potential for flow to the east. south and to the east, mm -hmm. of which, of course, is the direction of the Aquarian wells that have experienced PFC concentrations. Uh, finally, the EPA seems to recognize that, yes, we sh they should at least explore whether or not, in fact, through bedrock uh, investigation, that materials have been flowing in those directions. And uh, I've spoken with Fred about that today, and uh, his thought, and I think it's a good one, is that uh, a, a letter could be sent by this board encouraging the EPA in, uh, to do that uh, in as much as they seem to have finally recognized that and uh, at least letting them know that we appreciate that and hope they'll follow through because mm -hmm. uh, we certainly will. And uh, I've sent a copy of that article to Professor Ballestero and uh, if you don't mind uh, we can draft a letter for the board for next week that will uh, respond to that initiative. Yeah. I think that's great. It seems like we actually have someone that might be in our corner a little bit, so. Sure. Good. Good. Thank you. I think that's a good idea. You know, and I want to thank both Regina, Phil Bean, and Andy. you, Council, for, for working diligently on this, uh, yeah. helping out Aquarian, because Aquarian also realizes how much of a problem it is. And, and Representative so, Mesmer, too. And Mesmer. Oh, yes, but wonderful. I'm talking for our, 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 people. our people here. Yeah. Uh, for really jumping on board and helping out with that. So thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. Thank you, Regina. I One, still oh. got old business okay. when you have a minute. Okay. Okay. Smutty Nose, folks. Is their pretreatment um, set up complete yet? No. Nope. Why not? Because it's going to take some time to build a million dollars worth of equipment. Yes, but we've had that brewery functioning now for what, five years? Well, they've been functioning at a reduced rate of BOD and, and uh, CO, and, and they they're can't function above that rate, which is within our capacity to serve and doesn't hurt the plant uh, until such time as they bring up a complete pretreatment system, which they are working on and they've indicated to us they are going to implement and put in effect. Uh, and they cannot get a full certificate for ex for use of the entire facility until it is in effect. I just want to make sure that we're staying <coughs> on top of it because the last time Mr. when Chairman, I was I, 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 I was happened to be in the building when, when the town manager had a meeting and the DPW mm -hmm. and they were extremely forceful and extremely Good. clear on exactly what could be done. So. It was not, there was no gray area, there was no, no that you may do this, you may, you are restricted mm -hmm. to this amount and that's all until you get your treatment plan. So I just don't want to make anybody think that, that they're not on top of it because they are on top of it 100%. Thank you. Well, I just want to clarify Thank because you. we haven't heard anything about it for a little bit 
And the last time on my prior term, I never knew that they had not done that pretreatment on that plant, so I don't want that to get by again. Um, what about the uh, industrial surcharge fee, if somebody knows? Where are we with that? Well, without changing the complete sewer regulations, we're not ready to do that yet. Um, we have a standby charge if they want to increase their BOD, which they can't do, um, and they can't afford the charge either. Remember uh, the Wright Pierce report yeah. says industrial surcharge. Well, fee. industrial surcharge is not something we just make up overnight. This well, is, I understand this is a, that. It's it's a quite an involved process, and the and the entire set of regulations which Public Works has just finished uh, completing a base review on, and I haven't even looked at yet. Mm -hmm. uh, have not been completed, but this board's going to be getting a a hefty package in the near future of a complete set of regulations that include all those things. Because Exeter's doing it, Portsmouth is doing it, Wright Pierce, you know, had that information all in his uh, report, okay. and I just don't want it slipping through the cracks. Oh, no, we're working on it. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Anything else? No. It'll make you happy. <laughs> that does. Uh, <laughs> um, one thing on the old business is we have the... Uh, the vote for the cost of living raise, so that yes. should come up on oh, the old business. I, I just yeah. thought of that as I yep. I looked at my notes. So do we have any? Yeah, this is a good time to do it. Yep. Yeah. So excellent time. To make a motion. Yep. So we made a mo we're going to make a motion that we're going to give all non-union employees a two percent raise, with the exception of town council to town attorney because he received. A, his own raise last year, so we're going to limit him to 1% for this year. A second. Okay, we have a motion second. A and to clarify, individuals who have just assumed a new position and so forth this year have already been compensated. They've, they've already, like anybody that's a recent hire or a recent right. promotion will be it will stay at, at the percentage they have. Right. And we will also be, over the summer, we're going to be further looking at the, the w job wage schedule, and we'll mm -hmm. be coming back with more on that, too. Yep. So we have a motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Good. Anything else on the old business? New business. Protocol for a municipal budget committee. Yes, Mr. Chairman. There was a meeting about a week and a half ago with the town manager, assistant town manager, and the chairman and vice chairman of the budget committee as well as the finance director and myself. And we were talking as far as how protocol was going to go for this year. And the chairman wanted to get an idea of what town management was expecting, what they could work with, what they couldn't work with. So that was discussed. I don't know, Fred, did you want to uh, say anything about this? Or do you want no, me you're to? You're doing a great job. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I believe that it was the consensus of everyone, if it was okay by this board, that as long as nothing gets out of hand, that we would grant permission to the chairman and the vice chairman, so it would be Tim Jones and Mike Pluff, right. to, have ac to have access to um, the town manager assistant town manager and the finance director in some type of a orderly fashion, you know, either mm -hmm. calling first or sending an email communication mm -hmm. stating exactly what they were requiring. So obviously, you so know, Christy could have a heads up. So long as it's done in an orderly fashion. Right. Exactly. So would that be okay by this board mm -hmm. for that? Uh, Regina, yeah. it's, a, a for, it's a way for them to ask for information that they want for the committee in right. an orderly way. And pretty much we're just sort of circumventing the whole me and you yep. going to me and going to you. And that's, that's fine. Good. But if we, we have a problem with it, we'll go back to that. Right. And they all right. agreed to that and they all discussed that. So Excellent. I feel that it's going to be a good decision. So that's good. That's fine. Thank you. Super. Wastewater system development account. Fred? Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> members of the board, um, we're under an order to do flow testing uh, of material being transmitted by pipe from the Church Street uh, pumping station to mm -hmm. the wastewater treatment plant. We've been doing some experimenting, <coughs> giving data to uh, D DES and Concord, and we have come up with a system that has, that can within parameters be as low as one and a half percent of the total flow. And that's pretty good for a, mm -hmm. a flow meter system for a system that large. 
the cost is fourteen thousand three hundred and seventy six dollars and we're requesting that you permit us to take that money from the wastewater system development account so that we don't have to raise tax money for this yeah good okay and does it is it a single source bid it is a single source it is a particular type of instrument approved by the state and um, that's well it's the system approved so we, we need to stick with the approved system okay so do i have a motion also move that we I'll second it moved by mary louise seconded by, by yeah. jim all those in favor unanimous uh let the record note that uh um selectman griffin griffin had to leave at 8 30. yeah okay next one is Uniforms. Bid 2018-003, Uniform Rental Service. Right. A waiver. Mr. Chairman, uh, every year, every excuse me, every three years, we go out to bid for uniforms for the Public Works Department. These are work uniforms. Uh, th this uniform system is for more than a singular year. This actually happens to be for, I believe, two years. Um, and the cost is in excess of... Um, $32,515 and some change. And there were only two bids received, but it is a low bidder. And we would request the board's approval. So Mr. I, Chairman, I'll move to waive the purchasing policy for the uniforms for public works and authorize the execution of the contract. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Cheshire Place Bond Reduction to 10%. That's requested uh, by everyone involved. Um, we have a, a certificate saying that, in fact, the work uh, has been accomplished, and we would like to reduce the bond to 10% or $4,002.40. Four Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Management agreement with Conservation Commission for land at 230 Exeter Road. Mr. Chairman, uh, as I, we have done in the past, uh, I made up a, a draft agreement, which I've run by the Conservation Commission. Uh, as you can see, I've given you some, some, in, some material regarding that. Um, they would like to make a change. Uh, and that change deals with the harvesting of timber on the property, which probably be 30, 40, or 50 years in the future because of the size. Uh, but once harvested, if there's income from that harvesting, they would like the income placed in the conservation fund. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, we have the standard agreement that we have for the other conservation land, or the other land the town has taken, uh, or been given, in this case it was a gift, um, to make this conservation land, to put it under their management and control, uh, and to assist them with whatever needs to happen. As you can see, there are a number of things. Um, yeah. No structures, including portable toilets, should be placed in the property without permission from the Board of Selectmen is one of the items that they we, we put in there. Uh, hunting will be permitted in accordance with state, state laws. Uh, and the timber cutting, of course, funds to be deposited into the general fund. Mm -hmm. um, we've done this now with several other pieces of property. It gives us the opportunity to have more eyes watch the land yep. and to put it in protection, which was, I believe, the, the Selectmen's actual emphasis in taking the property and accepting it. Yeah. So we need a motion to accept the management I'll agreement? I'll make the motion. I'll motion. Second, second that I did ask, I believe, for a, for a print of that segment of land. I just would like to see it, if conservation can can uh, leave a print. I'm sure you can find one. We've had, we oh, had we it get before. A print. Yeah, yeah, we've well, had it before, so yeah. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. you can get it. I'd just yeah. like to be able to That's see fine. the configuration. Okay. Because that's favor. next to 236. Yep. Right. All those in favor? Yep. This is a sore point, yes. Unanimous. <clears throat> okay. Designation of a fire lane tow zone on the right of way at 518 Ocean Boulevard to 514 Ocean Boulevard, vehicle and traffic. Mm. We what? had a, uh, Mr. Chen, we had a conversation last week about uh, tow zones, and, and uh, that brought up a conversation with the resident at number 514. Uh, Ocean Boulevard, mm -hmm. there is a right-of-way that runs past uh, the front building into the back building. And that, that should be, as we did on uh, 5, is it 95? 95. Yep. Um, that's, that's already a, uh, a fire lane, 
and this should be a fire lane as well because it's the only access to that building in the rear. So that's going to be on the boar's head side. Of the it property. is on the boar's head side. It's it's. Um, there's a row of houses on the north side of Boys Head Terrace. This is just the other side of it. Okay. And it's and it will be posted. Yeah, it will be posted. Yes. Okay. So I have a motion. I'll make a motion. motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Changes to vehicle and traffic. Nope. You missed lot parking lots. You missed the. No, uh, oh, Huckleberry. Oh, I'm sorry. Designation, I, I skipped right over that one. <laughs> yeah. Designation, you miss Huckleberry. Designation of a no parking either side tow zone Huckleberry from Ocean Boulevard to Bayberry Lane, vehicle and traffic. Yes. Mr. Okay. Chairman, it's been called to our attention that um, we have a, apparently quite a few cars parking on Huckleberry. <laughs> uh, yeah. And they've done, I gave you pictures of the, of the asphalt. It's, uh, the asphalt's deteriorated very badly where the cars have been breaking it off for some extended period of time, apparently. Mm. We need to stop that parking because we're gonna have to replace this roadway. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna have to do extensive work as it is. So this would prohibit that parking in that area. And this is quite a ways down uh, Huckleberry, so it should discourage people from parking in there. All right. I will so move. Oh, Regina's moving it, oh. you second. Okay. All those in favor, unanimous. Okay, now with number eight, changes well, We'd like to uh, withhold number eight and send it back to the drawing board. We have some additional input tonight, and uh, we want to bring back a, a, a revised revision of the revision. We'll okay. see that next week, maybe? You'll see that next week, sir, with some interesting information attended okay. to it. I'll ask and where we're then. still on new business, oh. I just, <laughs> I just want to let you know that uh, we, we had had a, a request from the Regional Economic Development Center, which is located yes. over, in, over in Exeter. Yeah. Uh, we're not in their, their 2019 plan uh, because we hadn't submitted anything and they, our representative called us and asked us to submit something. I talked to Public Works and uh, as you know, we, we, we have been working on trying to get something done in Winnicott Road for the schools yeah. uh, the, and the school process. So we submitted a, a request for $2,500,000 to rebuild Winniconnet Road from Route 1 all the way down to uh, the corner. And uh, that includes sidewalks, parking, you name it, it's in there, as well as school access and so forth. And they have accepted that proposal and are going to put it in the state plan. Nice. Oh my. So, nice. Very good news. Well, it's good that we can do that. You know, the yeah. schools have spent a lot of money on, they have. on trying to upgrade the schools. And, they're trying to promote walking to school and riding bikes and yeah we you know we constantly have to have police officers out here oh yeah, oh, yeah. for the tra for the people that cross they don't Scary. have enough spots to park they don't have enough spots to drop people mm -hmm. off so i think it's a great idea i have one more thing sorry yes. i know brian mills already left he probably thought i forgot but um <laughs> if you go onto the aquarian website they're having a uh, they're looking for New Hampshire's top environmental volunteers. So if anyone knows oh, yeah. a person, nonprofit, or a company who has made a real difference in the environment, specifically for water, I would imagine, for Aquarian, um, don't be shy about telling us what you've achieved. You can self-nominate, and they're going to announce the winners on June 7, 2018, at a special event to be held at the Victoria Inn in Hampton. Mm. I think the time is to be mm. determined, so... I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that. Very nice. While we're talking about Aquarian, do they are they still looking for people for their? Yes, yes. they are for yes, their advisory are. committee. So I just want to make sure that we got that. Yeah. So if anybody out there in the public is interested in being on the advisory committee for Aquarian, yeah. please contact them. Yeah. I referred a couple of people. I have one more under new business. Um, the shooting in the town forest has started up again. The neighbors are upset again. Uh, I have talked with uh, Jay Diener, the chairman of conservation, and Fred has been helping. We've had a little round robin going on here. Um, Fred has been encouraging conservation to uh, mark or, or identify all of the conservation-owned land up there because there are a number of parcels and there are about five private parcels up there, I believe. So it, uh, it looks like we are going to be having uh, another year with a lot of complaints unless we can get this situation under control. Has the police department get received any complaints? As far as I know, the answer to that question is no. So well, I did ask the chief to go back and look at the directory 
of complaints that have come in since January 1. And uh, to the best of his, he is the only person that's made a complaint so far this year. And it turns out that the wind was blowing in the wrong direction and they were having a heavy fire night up at the Northampton Range. So that, uh, that can happen. It just depends upon the characteristics of the weather. And that being said, there, there is a large parcel that is, is the town forest, but there's also a number of those parcels that are privately that owned. Are private, five and parcels. We, yeah. And we have no control over whether the people are firing on their property or not. No, I talked to the chairman of the conservation today. Uh, we had a, a meeting, and uh, I requested that uh, they determine where the lot lines are mm -hmm. for their particular parcel. I know it's been surveyed, yeah. but it hasn't been marked. Mm -hmm. And that they contact Fish and Game and find out what they need for proper postings and post the perimeter of their properties so we know exactly where it is. And if anybody's in those properties and they're shooting, that's a different issue. That's yeah. right. And the density of population in Hampton, I understood there's some kind of legislation up in Concord where they're saying anybody's free to shoot anywhere, anytime. That's a little bit uh, over the top. Make a motion to uh, adjourn at 8.39. Any other closing comments? Motion to I'll adjourn. Second. second. All those in favor? Thank Good you. night. Thank you, Channel 22. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You, Gary. Thank you.